न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद शालन विलेट Hello there. Very good evening, and welcome to another edition of Face to Face. Uh, we've been discussing uh, the current political uh, situation here in Sri Lanka. Today there was a massive protest in Colombo. Uh, tear gas was fired. Water cannons uh, were fired. Uh, a lot of things happened in Colombo today, and on the sidelines um, there was a chess tournament of children going on uh, at the public library, and and these children too. Uh, was severely affected by the tear gas that was also fired uh, somewhere into the premises <coughs> probably uh, during the entire commotion but um, well that's one highlight that took place in colombo today uh, the protest that was organized by the samaki jana bala vege of course reminding all our sri lankans that we are back and this is an election year and there are going to be um incidents like these taking place in the future as well now to discuss these matters and much more we've got with us a uh, today parliamentarian uh, attached now to the freedom people's congress um, mr charitha herat thank you very much sir for joining us on our program today thank you thank you for having me charitha uh, so mr herat this uh, i i i can't really understand where the <coughs> freedom people's congress is now there are 13 members uh, parliamentarians formerly from the uh, sri lanka podujana peramuna mm-hmm. uh, who broke away from the government declared themselves as an alliance uh, freedom people's uh, alliance that's the name of the alliance that you've formed uh, and uh, just a few weeks ago uh, dilan pereira parliamentarian announced that sajit premadasar is the common candidate and that um y'all will be supporting or or he will be supporting now he sat for this press conference along with nalaka godaheva and gl peris the former chairman of the sri lanka podu jana peramuna so tell me is the freedom people's congress now in alliance with the samagi jana bala vege or have we not decided yet well we we did not decide yet and okay. uh, we we have a started discussion with all the main political pr- parties mm-hmm. uh, to form a kind of uh, um, alliance mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. this government mm-hmm. and against their political economic program okay so we are still in that discussions mm-hmm. and uh, while we are doing that thing uh, there are some issues and some of our members are claiming that they have uh, signed agreement mm-hmm. or kind of like you know a mo you with uh, sjb and mm-hmm. that i don't know actually and you mm-hmm. have to ask from them and as you said some honorable members are saying that they are now part of sjb hmm. and sjb alliance hmm. we are not hmm. so when the freedom people's congress does or if the freedom people's congress gets into an alliance with the samagi jana bala vege the jatika jana bala vege or any other political party in the country who would announce it like who should we believe because now uh, you, you're you're an alliance of of 13 members who broke away from uh, the governing political party so who should we look at when it comes to the decision of the freedom people's congress well shalan we are not a party mm-hmm. we are not a party like you know uh, i mean uh, announcing the party positions mm-hmm. we gathered uh, 13 members of parliament uh, mm-hmm. who came from slpp mm-hmm. and uh, we are having different opinion on different issues mm. but uh, we all know that uh, honorable dalla sala peruma mm. is the leader of our fraction or leader of our group mm. so uh, we have democratic culture within our group and mm. uh, even uh, members could uh, uh, you know discuss uh, their own political positionings mm. so now uh, i can say that we did not sign with anybody's uh, party up to now but we have mm. been discussing Mm. with main political forces how to form a uh, kind of productive uh, proactive program mm. uh, to defeat this mm. government mm. this government's political economic program mm. so uh, you all know that you know imf driven mm. economic program has been uh, implementing in this country throughout last you know uh, 45 years Mm. and uh, this is the same program that mm. uh, the current president has been mm. initiating or mm. uh, uh, forming or developing mm. uh, so we want to form a uh, constructive opposition constructive mm. uh, alternative mm. to this program mm. so that is the key 
in this coming um, presidential election mm. i think you can change people you can change leaders you can change uh, personalities mm. but what we need to do is to change the political program mm. now this program we can call it liberal or neoliberal economic program or imf driven economic program mm. Mm. but what we need to do is to form a social uh, social uh, democratic kind of political program mm. economic program to uh, s- uh, solve many issues that we have right now mm. i think uh, unless and until mm. we do such things we will not be able to solve any major issues mm. which we are having right now mm. so uh, we think that we need to focus on that hard main real political issues mm. than just to talk on the surface mm. so that is why we think that discussing a political program dis- discussing an economic alternative mm. uh, are the main issues mm. than to see that you know whether we will go and sign an agreement with any party right now mm. but uh, mr herat now the issue really here is that um, what happened in sri lanka uh, the so called economic crimes as uh, they are being known right now uh, these have been happening for many 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 years and it took uh, sri lanka the economic crisis and then for the imf to come and point out and say look here if you don't do these if you don't get these things right we are not going to give you any money to get out to get you out of the mess that you're in right now so does it really take now we we speak about being self sufficient we speak about having you know 2500 years of great history but at the end of the end of the day the fact of the matter is that we were mismanaging our country so badly and it took a foreign intergovernmental or international organization to come and tell us look what you're doing is stupid please do the right thing uh, if not we are not going to help you well well uh, i think there are, there are two ways uh, to to look at imf uh, opinion or prescription mm. now as you said uh, we have done economic wrongly in mm. our ca- country mainly from 2008 up to now Mm. so there were many lapses many mm. lacunas many mm. issues mm. but uh, imf prescription mm. is another thing uh, even we can argue that that is one part of the problem mm. so we have had imf support 16 time mm. and uh, some uh, but we've never completed their program yeah, some some time we did not complete and i think all 16 times we never no, no 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 we no, completed no, a few no, we, yeah we 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 completed some time but okay. you know out of 16 i think four or five times mm. we left it out like you know mm. you can't do that because it was uh, you know sometime their their prescription was uh, so hard and people will be getting sort of lot of issues mm. right now the same thing is happening mm. now like they are they are you know prescribing that you have to impose this tax then the government is going to do that like mm. the government is just the uh, translating mechanism of the imf uh, agendas mm. like you know mm. they are just uh, not thinking the people behind the government mm. are not thinking at all Mm. what they are doing is translating mm. so that is the issue that mm. we just need to look at that is why four time or five times uh, imf programs were left out by mm. uh, those governments previous governments. Uh, uh, previous governments so the same thing is happening now like you know uh, now at the moment you know people are facing many difficulties mm. lot of difficulties and uh, Uh, even uh, the president and the financial uh, you know expert of the government are saying that uh, we can't do anything else than mm. just to translate what mm. they are saying mm. so i think uh, we need to hit this main issue real political issue mm. it is in the ground so un- i mean if we don't touch that and just to leave it as it is we have to follow the same prescription mm. and uh, just change the leadership mm. that might not you know happen anything that might not change anything mm. so the same uh, uh, same pressure same poverty same stress same uh, uh, you know difficulties mm. uh, to the people mm. will continue like you know that is that is not uh, that is what we are we are, we are they are discussing in 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 forming these alliances but now uh, mr herat you're speaking about a practical program forward something that we can really implement you know do the right thing for once uh, for a change at least here in sri lanka uh, now there was a piece uh, a news report uh, that i saw uh, quite recently and um, that was really alarming uh, for example now you were speaking about the issues of the general public now we know that uh, electricity prices the electricity tariff hike that took place on multiple occasions last year that has increased sri lanka's uh, the burden 
that has been put on the general public of Sri Lanka monumentally. Uh, about one million connections have been disconnected due to non-payment of uh, dues to the CEB. So that's the magnitude of the issue. Uh, and this news report says that there has been about 12 billion rupees that has been given out by the CEB on loan to CEB employees. And out of that 12 billion, or whichever loans that were given by the CEB to their employees, you, the general public, we have been paying two thirds of the interest on this loan. Now, one cannot say that, uh, you know, we didn't know this was being mismanaged so badly because the CEB has been suffering losses for decades. The CEB has been suffering losses for decades. So, Mr. Herath, now you've been in Parliament, you've been in uh, the Cabinet uh, several times. Um, so I was not in the Cabinet. Sorry. Any time. No. I, I beg your pardon. Uh, yes, uh, but, but even in Parliament, even in uh, Parliament or at the Cabinet meetings. Has it never come to the attention of any cabinet member or even at the SLPP group meetings? Has it never come to the attention of anyone? We have 225 parliamentarians who we uh, spend quite a lot on. And are you telling me that none of them really thought, hey, um, CEB is making so much of losses for so many decades. Maybe we should take a look at why this is happening. No, like now these are very complicated issues. Like uh, actually outside people cannot... Uh, get these data, so, you mm -hmm. know, how the CB internal, uh, you know, auditing and internal accounting is happening. Okay. So this is the first time that uh, the minister mm -hmm. uh, identified th this issue and brought mm -hmm. back, brought it to the discussion. Mm -hmm. so and of course, is, it's good on him that yeah, he did yeah, so. This is, this is very good thing. But, you know, he has taken this thing to just to like, you know, control the, the, the issue that was uh, coming from the CB right now. Mm. Because uh, the government has decided to say that, you know, this bundle, mm. the CEB and they, they are now proposing a new act mm. uh, to, to replace the existing uh, mm. Electricity mm. Act 2009. Mm. Okay. So, uh, there are a lot of, you know, internal and outside uh, protests coming in. Mm. Mm. So, minister wanted to deal with them by using this uh, thing. This is very important that he, he found out this mm. issue mm. and we need to look at it. So shouldn't 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 the directors of these uh, institutions be held liable for these these these, this, this, this amounts to fraud? This no, amounts yeah, to yeah. fraud. This is this is not only the one place that we can see this kind of issues. Mm. Even when I was uh, at the COP as a chairman, mm. I have found that even central bank, mm. uh, you know, like uh, there there are also issues where sometimes the the, the uh, workers or the officers. Uh, part of the uh, kind of like uh, you know payments were mm. made by the bank mm. so like uh, the same thing happened here the CB uh, management uh, took uh, some part of the interest of the mm. Mm. Uh, officers or the their, their workers uh, loans mm. which is not correct and mm. we have to rectify that and we have to sometime get this money back Mm. from their some you know their provident fund or their mm. salaries mm. that is not an issue and that uh, we but we that, that but that will never happen mr hera no, that might happen like that, you know, I, I, I i'd like to bet on you <laughs> bet on that that it will never happen mr no hera. no it might it might because like you know you can't uh, uh, pass this thing in a way that you know you can't uh, just ignore because because, have to because because of course you you uh, during your time on on the corp committee um, uh, you revealed a lot of these things uh, we see the auditor general's report coming out uh, every now and again and 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 massive scale fraud corruption uh, things that would just disgust you and, and and wonder how could people do these kind of things in a country that is already broke <laughs> to put it quite loosely uh, but at the end of the day nothing really does happen no, now, Shalan, we have to understand this. Uh, the parliament mm -hmm. can only recommend. I understand, things, I understand. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not blaming you yeah, for right. it. I'm not but blaming you, know, you like, for you know, it. But, you know, <laughs> the, the, we need to have a kind of mechanism to look at this thing. Mm. And, uh, you know, the secretaries of the ministries are the chief accounting officers. Mm. And they are, they are, you know, they are, they are, they are bounding mm. to, to do their job. Mm. So, one part of their job is to look at this kind of issues and to rectify those things mm. or they can go to courts and, you know, file cases mm. against some of these people. Mm. But uh, this particular case like CB1, I think uh, we need to have a, a 
um, common understanding on this thing and this should be rectified mm. i don't know how they will so, do that so this know. this this could be part of the reason why now now sri lanka is divided of course on 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 the opinion as to you know the government says we need to privatize these institutions there is a group that says we shouldn't privatize these institutions but uh, from the speaking from the side of the government what they say is that these institutions are riddled with corruption and these are the examples that they give no no but but you know that is why i said like you know the minister took this issue to completely you know i mean sideline the argument coming mm-hmm. from the uh, uh, cb side but on, then this really this really puts a dent this no, really no, wait, puts wait, wait, a dent yeah. in the in the good faith argument of the ceb because they've been acting so much in bad faith no, no, for well, so long no no well we have to we have to look at uh, you know what government is trying to do mm-hmm. you can just you know say that you know, there were some issues with the uh, you know officers or the workers uh, loans and then we have to privatize all these thing you can't say that mm-hmm. now here uh, what government is trying to do is to privatize the transmission mm-hmm. now there are three main areas of electricity uh, generations that generations transmissions and distribution mm. so now generations are been done by private sector and the government mm. the transmission under the electricity act of 2009 completely given to the government uh, own ceb mm. so now this time it seems that the transmission would also be given to private sector which is mm. problematic Mm. which should not be done in mm. my opinion but it is going to happen mm. so then the uh, distribution is mm. another part now leco has been doing this that thing and there might be some more companies mm. all together 16 new companies to be mm. coming in mm. if the 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 act or the bill pass in mm. the parliament so uh, i think that debate is one important issue mm. Mm. and uh, while you are having this thing and this kind of you know mismanagement of the uh, ceb mm. coming in like we need to look at those things separately mm. At the same time we need to take this new act mm. uh, as a you know uh, another another try or another attempt mm. by the government to you know do their privatization program they mm. i mean they are they are just uh, listening to imf and their friends mm. they just want to like now for example uh, this uh, uh, slt mm, issue mm, mm. Uh, has been discussing these days now like mm. last week i have seen that there was a discussion uh, that the president has you know initiated on mm. this thing and uh, they wanted uh, the government wanted to like to sell the uh, government own stake mm. of the slt and the director board had a slt and without agreed. having any study and if somebody asked that why you are doing this they might say that no no our friends are asking then we are doing that mm. nothing else that they can say no study mm. no uh, any research mm. no any financial kind of you know uh, research done on this thing mm. Mm. and even the previous chairman mm. resigned mm. Uh, rejecting the government uh, you know kind of proposal to do mm. this thing mm. but they are doing that they are doing that even this you know profit making entities are being taken mm. into their like 52 whatever the you know list mm. that they are going to privatize, privatize. Mm. now one is litro mm. litro was taken but by I the but i believe the chairman of litro came and said that uh, it's not going to be privatized but you know he can say many things mm. but you know, the government and the cabinet of ministers are deciding mm. that all the you know subsidies under sri lanka insurance board mm. will be privatized then one of that is the litro mm. then the lanka hospital and that is another part mm. now there are um, there are some institutions some government um, soes some state owned mm. enterprises mm. which are you know loss making and you mm. you can you know i mean reform those things mm. but showing those names mm. and uh, selling some other profit making government entities mm. is not acceptable but that is what is doing by the, i mean this, uh, by this government um uh, mr hirat uh, just finally um uh, what happened in parliament uh, with regard to the online safety bill uh, i believe that was supposed to be uh, the focus of today's discussion but we veered off a little bit uh, uh, but um with regard to what happened in parliament um there is a little bit of a confusion among the general public because once we vote for parliamentarians we uh, vote on the presumption that they know what they're doing that they can pass laws to govern us and that is the reason why we put them in parliament 
um, give them benefits, vehicles, houses, the whole nine yards. Uh, we were so not given vehicles, by the way. <laughs> that is one thing that we need to get, yeah, we need to get clear because, you know, people are saying that the old MPs were given vehicles, Previous, houses. Previously, no, previously. I don't know previously, but we were not given houses, we were not given vehicles, nothing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Besides the point, yeah. Yeah, I, what I've said. Because, you know, all the time the media <laughs> has been just saying that, you know, two, 225 people were given houses, vehicles. Official and residences? No, nothing. Nothing? Nothing. nothing. That's, that's the thing. That I'm telling in front of your camera hmm. nothing but you know the ministers may be uh, given like Different I don't know story. Hmm. I don't know but the old 225 MPs were not given any housing things hmm. any uh, vehicles or nothing regardless yeah. of that uh, parliamentarians are appointed on the presumption that they would know what they're doing so okay. what really happened with the online safety bill uh, that is that is very important issue uh, first of all Charlotte we need to understand we need to agree that hmm. we don't have enough uh, regulations on online uh, material online right, content right. that okay. is one thing yes and when i was the secretary of the ministry of media we were trying to get some uh, you know regulation mm. passed but mm. it was not successful okay but that is one thing mm. at the same time this online safety bill mm. is a kind of dangerous kind of dangerous uh, uh, you know piece of uh, legislation mm. because uh, you know it gives very open ended uh, interpretations. Kind of interpretations now uh, like mr herat what, what my question is what happened in parliament towards the end of the passage do you think something out of the ordinary took place uh, that is another thing like you know i mean this this bill was gazetted and it was uh, challenge in the Supreme mm -hmm, Court mm -hmm. and the Supreme Court has uh, given uh, you know their determinations the proposed now, amendments now now this this bill had uh, 56 uh, clauses mm -hmm. out of 56 31 clauses were you know amended amended and mm -hmm. suggested to amend so that uh, amendments were uh, tabled mm -hmm. one day in advance to the uh, discussions mm -hmm. 23rd mm -hmm. of uh, January and uh, there were some issues that uh, whether the real determination sense a sense mm. was taken in this uh, amendments mm. so we we wanted to the members of the opposition wanted to see mm. whether those things were correctly done mm. there was there is a you know kind of uh, a committee which mm. is uh, which is called sectoral oversight committee yes. to look at this thing and that committee did not handle this well Mm. So they were just, you know, g getting the uh, determination uh, file and the uh, amendment files and just to declare that it was done, mm. correctly done. But they were not going through each one. They didn't. Yeah. Then the, in the committee stage mm. of the debate, we raised this issue, mm. mainly the, you know, uh, clause number five of the act, act mm. was, uh, uh, you know, completely... Uh, uh, question mm. at the court and uh, the determination was uh, clearly indicated that uh, the appointment of the commissioner so mm. the members of the commission mm. should be done through the uh, constitutional council, council not yes. by not directly by the president mm. so then the uh, honorable sumandiran raised the issue that whether this was clearly taken into the uh, amendments mm. and uh, the government said that it was taken but anyway there were uh, many that kind of issues mm. in this committee stage and we wanted even I, I can say openly that uh, we want uh, a speaker to wait mm. till the uh, uh, Attorney General, uh, Attorney General, Attorney mm. General's mm. Uh, observations come mm. to the final uh, amendments mm. because uh, that amendment sometimes that amendments were not address the mm. issues mm. Mm. raised by the Supreme Court mm. so um, uh, this is one uh, part of the issue of our legislature because you know you the committee stage amendments were not cross-checked mm. by the uh, Supreme Court or by the uh, Attorney General in some time so it is it, not cross-checked yeah, that is the but issue. But the speaker no? said that it's always cross-checked. No, no, it was not like, you know, at that uh, committee, mm. Attorney General was present and the Secretary of the Ministry was there, mm. but uh, uh, the committee chairman did not go through each of these things and he just said that, okay, this is the uh, determination and this is the amendment and that is done. Mm. So it was closed by 15, 20 minutes. Mm. But, you know, 31 amendments... Mm should be looked and at. Who, and who sat as the chairman of the sectoral oversight committee? That is one newly appointed member of parliament from SLPP. I don't want to name the people, but you know, that is not 
correctly done. Uh, that is the issue. Hmm. That is a part of the problem here. But you know, I mean, we 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 request the speaker to just to go through this hmm. very carefully with the um, with the attorney general. Hmm. And 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 once that is done. If it's passed in Parliament, but but you're okay if it, with it no, I'm not okay with it. Mm. You know that is a very dangerous piece of legislation, and you know there are some issues which are still uh, not cleared, and mm. even uh, some some terms, uh, false statements, prohibited statements, public order violations. So these are the terms that they have used. But you know, in the um, clause number fifty-six, gives. Uh, uh, interpretations mm. but you know some of these 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 terms are not interpreted at mm. all mm. what are the false states, uh, statements like these are very subjective kind of mm. uh, you can you can argue that you know this is false mm. but you know there should be a proper proper uh, you know interpretations on these things mm. even um, prohibited statements that was also not uh, clearly demarcated even clause number 90 mm. which is the most dangerous mm. part of this uh, act Mm. I think mm. was not touched even at the Supreme Court discussions mm. because uh, even our side the, the, the people who have put you know the petitions uh, petitions were not taking that issue mm. because there it says that you know like uh, I mean uh, even uh, if, if you have time just one minute like we can just say this is very important part number 19 really uh, yeah, cheating by personation yeah, impersonation like this is uh, like you the shala now you are now person can make uh, online account under your name mm, mm. and using that account mm. he, he could do lot of these you know violations mm. false statements prohibited mm, statements mm, mm. all these things so end of the day mm. the, the law will start to examine with you mm. not with the guy who have uh, who has you know I mean created all, all this thing yeah mm. so this is the this is one part of the issue of this number 19 clause mm. so that should be now uh, the minister agreed with mm. us that it should be looked at and it should right. be you know uh, change or right. you know amendment mm. like you mm. know but I don't know whether they will do that mm. but that type of you know lacunas and issues are there are, are there mm. in this act and uh, I think uh, this is a threat to the democracy mm and to the economic development hmm. uh, of this country. Hmm. I think uh, what uh, the government has done was not acceptable at all. Uh, Mr. Herath, of course, uh, all the opposition parties are against this bill and uh, well, there will be a time uh, when maybe some opposition party, maybe not at this election, at a, pre at a future election where they will come into power and then we will see if the opposition to the online safety bill was real because the allegation is that the government can misuse this uh, act to well suppress the people's voices and if a government created by any party in the opposition or members in the opposition uh, come into government positions and they refrain from repealing this piece of legislation then we would know that their intentions today right. weren't genuine. So we will have to wait and see on that, uh, Ms. Hera. Thank you very much for joining us thank you. on our program this evening. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in to another episode of Face to Face. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.